<laughs> Welcome back to Twisted Metal 2, sometimes subtitled World Tour. And that tour begins today as we leave LA for the first time using the famous Mr. Slam. A little too close to Mr. Grimm for my taste, but he couldn't be a more different vehicle. He is gigantic and slow and hard to control. Its driver is disgruntled architect Simon Whittlebone. Fired for unknown reasons, he wants to build a tower and he's gonna kill anyone who tries to stop him. Which seems almost like a tasteless reference to the Killdozer incident, where a man in Colorado actually did take a bulldozer and go on a rampage. But that happened eight years after this game, just a coincidence. Not the last time the developers predicted what would become a real world tragedy, but Anyway, we begin the tastefully named Suicide Slide against five enemies who are immediately dropped right on top of us. So it's a good opportunity to use Mr. Slam Special. He smacks the ground with the shovel of the bulldozer, and if it hits someone, it closes on them and continues to smash them against the ground for considerable damage. Very powerful and very hard to use because it's short range and hits like two seconds after you fire it. And by now you may have noticed why we started with all the enemies right on top of us. This level is tiny. It's just a little cage. Like we traveled halfway across the world in multi-ton killing machines to get put in a little cage. It's a weird choice. There's Moscow, way out there in the distance. But we can't go there. It seems like a massive waste of resources, but Calypso's magic. Whatever. I did burn down one of the banners that was hanging from our cage. So that was pretty cool. Destructibles are limited here, but they make do with what they can. Now, part of the challenge of this level is finding healing. There's only two health pickups, and they tend to get grabbed by enemies. So I'm in a bad spot. And that was inevitable. I mean, I didn't have to be the first casualty of the battle, but now that I am, spawn right next to Roadkill and get a little revenge. That did it. Now I want to continue to thin the herd by taking out other damaged vehicles. Because these little arenas always get much easier once they're less crowded. Wanted to burn the second banner along the way, but I missed with my napalm somehow. We get plenty of other tries, although it's dangerous to waste your munitions like that. So, instead of hunting, I am gathering. Getting as many weapons as I can. They spawn from this generator, and I just grabbed that remote bomb, you heard the sound and everything, but I still have no weapons. Yeah, I'm scrolling through my weapons right now, just baffled as to where that remote bomb went. Um, so instead I am looking through the alternate views in this game. See there's my entire inventory, all on the screen, useless, no remote bomb. And zoomed out view just like in the first game. There's also super zoomed out view, where the mounds take on the appearance of cardboard cutouts, which they almost certainly are. There's a good chance we never left LA. This is just a Hollywood set and Calypso is screwing with us. I know I'm disinclined to take him at his word, but the enemies here are randomly selected. Every level you go to in this game, you're going to get random enemies, so you could fight anyone anywhere. And there's a few enemies you can get here that will make the entire level a complete nightmare. Axel is one of them, because he can blow up everything in a radius around him, and that eats up precious space in this tiny arena. Luckily, we didn't get any of the other really bad ones, like Twister or Sweet Tooth. So, this could have gone a lot worse but it still went pretty bad. I had a lot of trouble with this. Use the lightning from the generator at the center again to kill myself. It's funny that the lightning attack covers pretty much the entire level except for this outer rim. And yet, 
I can't seem to hit anyone else with it. I can hit myself just fine. Did some good damage to Axel. And then he started to juggle me. Which he can do indefinitely if he wants. Once he gets you in the air, you lose all momentum. And he can just stay underneath you and bounce you over and over. So, I'm running away. Getting some more arms from the generator in the center. Which will occasionally spawn something in its weird tractor beam. That's actually why we got a phantom remote bomb earlier. Because there's... I assume a glitch where sometimes what's about to spawn in the tractor beam will first appear on one of the ramps to the side of it. And I grabbed it and I think I prevented it from spawning at all. I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, time to finally get rid of this banner. That'll teach it to be written in its native tongue. Underneath that banner is another banner written in a language that I personally speak. The language of cheat codes. It says up, down, right, R1. Which, when entered at the proper screen, will unlock a secret bonus level. Which is multiplayer only. Very unfortunate, otherwise I would show it off, definitely, in a video. Especially because it's a level from Jet Moto. Another game developed by Single Track. So it would have been cool to see. Uh, you can use a Game Shark to play it single player, but I'm on a PS3, so I don't think a Game Shark's gonna work. And that, what I just grabbed out of the tractor beam, was a full health pickup. Those spawn in there extremely rarely, so I got very lucky, and it probably saved me from having to repeat this level. If nothing else, it bought me enough breathing room to show off something cool. But first, I have to wait for a remote bomb to spawn. So in the meantime, I was caught on fire for a second there, which is a new status effect introduced in this game. When you're on fire, you take constant uh, damage over time, of course. But if you hit your turbo, the fire will immediately go out. Which, in the first game, if you were frozen and you hit turbo, you would lose 5 points of turbo, but that would end the freeze. In this game, I don't think there's any way to end a freeze early. I think if you get frozen, you have to either get hit or wait a few seconds, which sucks. Hopefully I'm wrong and someone corrects me, because I would like to know better. And there were the fireworks that I wanted the remote bomb for. Put it in the dead center of the arena, set it off, and everything is destroyed completely screwing you out of tons of pickups that you desperately need if you're not down to your final opponent who has no health left. I think you can also hit the generator in the middle with napalm and destroy it. Screw yourself over that way. But you need the ramps to do that. We no longer have the ramps, nor any opponents as of Thumper's demise. So let us no longer stand between the angry bulldozer man and his goals because we know that's a dangerous spot to be in. I piloted my Zeppelin above the streets of New York, prepared to honor the victor with any price requested. His name was Simon Whittlebone, a disgruntled man fired from his job as an architect for wanting to build a tower that stretched to the heavens. Greetings, Simon Whittlebone. I raise my glass to the one competitor who's made it all the way. Please, Calypso, help me to build my tower. Help me to build my dream. With a wave of my arms, the building of Whittlebone Tower had begun. Using his bulldozer, Whittlebone built into the night. The progress he made was remarkable. Within days, his tower was higher than any skyscraper ever created, and for a brief moment, he was satisfied. But then, his small mind, as small minds tend to do, became overwhelmed with the possibilities of losing his status. What if someone else one day built a taller and greater building? Whittlebone became enraged at the thought. I am the greatest! Do you hear me, world? You people are all tiny ants to me now! No one will ever be as high or as great as me! Damn it! I am Simon Whittlebone! I am God! Oh! Oh! Whoa! Whoa! To this day, you can still see the dent in the street made by the crashing body of Simon Whittlebone. 
I let it serve as a reminder that everyone has a chance of winning my contest. <laughs> Even fools! I am Calypso, and I thank you for playing Twisted Metal. Our meathead architect built the world's tallest skyscraper with nothing but a bulldozer, then literalized the old saying, pride comes before the fall. It's a tale as old as time, so nothing much else to say about that one. Let's instead turn our attention to Thumper, since it stuck around so long in that battle. Its driver is Bruce Cochran, named for a tester on the first game. His canon ending in the last competition was to make South Central LA a safe, habitable place. The scope of this competition is much broader, and so too are Bruce's ambitions. He wants to give the same treatment to the entire globe. Godspeed, Thumper.